Hi everyone, so welcome back to the Solid, uh, Solid Experience uh, digital event. Uh, so we're uh, on the SolidWorks launch of uh, 2021. So my name is Stefan Wazel, and this portion is uh, 45 tricks in 45 minutes, so 45 tips in 45 minutes. Uh, I didn't count them, so you're probably going to receive a bit more than uh, 45. So if you want to do a survey and send us an email, that would be funny. Maybe there was going to be 65 tips in 45 minutes. So here we go. The first trick here inside of SolidWorks is this one. If you think about it and you look at this uh, beautiful keyboard here, the escape key is one of the most uh, used one inside of SolidWorks. Okay. My trick is bring it on a shortcut on uh, your mouse here. If you have the chance like me to have a beautiful 3D connection product, which we are officially reseller, um, you're going to have a, a nice little shortcut here on your mouse. So if you bring escape uh, on your mouse, what it does actually is, um, as you can see here, escape, okay, uh, control, is the second key that's the most used. So instead of being like this on your keyboard all day doing this, okay, uh, at least you're gonna be able to be straight and just press on control here. So bring escape. This is my uh, one of my first trick uh, inside of SolidWorks. Uh, the second one is delete. Another beautiful shortcut that you should bring back to your mouse. And I'm gonna explain why is Usually the delete key is at the other way of the keyboard, okay? So, so your uh, mouse end or the end that you use for your mouse is always leaving your mouse to go press on delete. I'm, uh, I'm sure and I know that you press delete all day long inside of SolidWorks uh, to delete uh, constraints, to delete parts, whatever, okay? So uh, think about it. If you bring this back to your mouse, okay, all day long you're going to be very straight and you're, you're barely gonna touch your keyboard because you're gonna have those beautiful shortcuts here inside of uh, your mouse. Uh, and if you think about it all day long on your work day, uh, having uh, the delete key on your mouse is uh, deleting emails, delete, deleting a website address. You're always pressing delete all day long, okay? Uh, so think about this. My next one is the famous uh, the famous uh, S key. The S key. I always compare the S key to something is having a big, uh, having a big warehouse or a big uh, garage here, okay? And all your tools are on the wall or in drawers like this, okay? Uh, if, for me, if you don't use the S key, this is what you're doing right now. You're working on your engine, you turn around and go to the wall and pick up your tool. You're going back to your working environment. You work on what you have to do. And the only magic trick here is if you have a shortcut of escape on your mouse, you can just magically push back the tool uh, on your wall. So when you think about it, the, the S key here is having your favorite tool uh, always at the tip of your hand. Okay, so I'm going to repeat this is if you don't use the S key for me, you're always uh, going away from your working environment to go all the way up there. And this is my example of the drawer. Okay, you need to open an, uh, another drawer and go and pick up your tool. You're going down. Let's take a circle. You're going down to your working environment. You're doing your work and now you're pressing escape. It's going to push back the tool uh, here. But still, you need to go and pick up your next one. So you're going all the way back to your menu and picking up your next tool. The S key here is always at the tip of your end. Another uh, small trick be before the next one with uh, the S key is if you have a 3D connection like this, a space mouse. If you think about it, if you put control here uh, on the left button and you put the S key on the right button, technically you don't touch your keyboard all day uh, unless you're putting dimensions, okay? But control, S key, delete, escape, everything at the tip of your end, okay? So less travel, 
uh, between the keyboard and the mouse and, uh, and this and that. So this is uh, a very uh, productive uh, tip uh, that you can enjoy right now. Next one is uh, again on the S key. There's a there's a new tips. There's a new tip. Sorry, inside of SolidWorks 2021, which is really really nice. Is you can search for your tools now. Okay. Uh, inside of this menu. It, it, it's not there in 2020. This is brand new for 2021. Uh, so this is my uh, my other tip that I'm giving you that you can search uh, for all those uh, features. And the next one, which is another tip, is uh, okay. You can now accept, have the accept button inside of your shortcut. Uh, not available in, tw in 2020. This is brand new for 2021. So instead of finishing this and going to uh, this, you can just uh, S key and uh, accept uh, if you do a feature or something. Uh, this is another way to uh, be a lot quicker instead of going on the accept button wherever, wherever it is on the screen. Uh, okay, next trick is, uh, I do have a lot of people that are still doing this, uh, this behavior in, um, in SOLIDWORKS is selecting two lines, okay? Yeah, I press control, I select two lines, now I have this menu here. Uh, I think it was uh, in 2016 that they released it. So th this trick is, uh, instead of selecting two entities, you can just select the endpoint and have the same exact option. So let's say I'm, I want to make it uh, perpendicular here. Um, I just selected the endpoint, not the both lines. Okay. The same thing for this. If I want to do um, a tangent, okay, uh, for those two, most of the people are still doing this. Is control, control, and I've, and now they have this menu for the uh, make it uh, tangent. So if you just select the point here that connects those two lines, okay, you're going to have your menu here. And this is another tip for you. When this little box disappear in this case, you see I still have it selected and my box did, did disappear, shift, okay, if you press the shift button, it's going to uh, re-show you this little box here. So I can make it tangent now. So uh, same example uh, here again, I'm just going to show you again if uh, let's say I select this point and I have my uh, my uh, my tools here, but it disappears because I moved my mouse a bit further. You just press shift and it's going to bring it back so you can make uh, this. Okay. Making a dimension between two circles is always going to give you center, center. Okay. Uh, so my trick here is uh, the shift again if I press shift and I go outside this circle and outside this circle it's gonna give me the outside dimension this is very nice because I do um, there's still people who are doing this inside of SOLIDWORKS I'm just gonna give you an example here uh, let's not exaggerate let's do this uh, come on circle there we go okay uh, they, they they would like to have the outside dimension of those two circles inside uh, of a of a dimension, and um, uh, they they sometimes they put some little asterisks at the at both end point to be able to grab it uh, with the dimension tool. So if you just press shift, okay, as you can see here, I just made my outside dimension very very quickly. So this is a little shortcut uh, because the uh, the other way to do this is clicking on on the dimension, going to leader here, and change those arc conditions. So as you can see, I've traveled all the way over there to change menus and go back down here to change those options. So uh, think about this: the shift key is going to do the trick here uh, very very quickly. Um, another thing that I like to show is uh, okay. First of all. For those who don't remember, SOLIDWORKS, the difference between white and yellow when it comes to uh, constraints like this. So as you can see now, it, it, the system is telling me that I do have an horizontal and a vertical line. Sorry, I did the opposite here, vertical line and horizontal line. But since it's in white, it's not going to do it for me. If I have something in yellow, yes, the system will automatically put a constraint, uh, constraint for me. 
Why am I showing this is my other trick is when you have a very complex sketch in front of you. Um, sorry, I'm just missing something. There you go. Okay, so when you have a very, very complex sketch in front of you, sometimes the system is trying to propose you. As you can see now, there's a bunch of lines going a bit crazy in my screen. It's cluttering my screen. If you press Control, as you can see now, I don't have nothing. Actually, I'm uh, kind of putting aside the automatic snap for a second. I'm going to zoom in what I want to do. And now I'm going to release control. So now it's going to propose me uh, what I would like. Okay. So this is the little trickier control. Uh, it's it's going to temporarily remove the uh, automatic snapping. So you can just uh, go near what you would like, zoom in. And now I, I release control and now the automatic automatic snapping goes back again okay so this is a this is a nice little trick uh, another thing that people are forgetting and I'm gonna give you an, a little example here is um, if I click and drag it's gonna it, it's not gonna propose me the next line but I'm still gonna have my little pen here uh, I never got used to this uh, functionality so Usually what every people, uh, everybody does is uh, they click, they click, they click. Now uh, they don't want this line, they're just going to press escape. But what happens if uh, I want to do another line? So let's say I want this, this, this. But now I don't want this line, but I would like to still have my pen, okay? My, my, my line tool. So if you double click, as you can see, it's going to remove this line. But I'm, I, I still have my line tool, so I can continue and do what I want, double click, and we start from here, okay? So that's just a little trick uh, that uh, I just like to remind uh, everyone that you can do inside of a sketch. Uh, one other uh, troubleshooting trick that I have is this one, okay? Uh, obviously, I'm pr pretty sure I'm gonna make it obvious for you, but uh, let's do this, okay? And let's do this. Okay, so sometimes I think my geometry is closed. Obviously, we do have the shaded sketch uh, contours now, uh, but sometimes it's a good troubleshooting trick that, I, that I'm that i gonna give you here is the select chain uh, function, okay? Uh, as you can see, selecting the chain here, it's telling me, look, you're not connected to your other segment here, so there's something wrong. So if you zoom in, oh, okay, the, you're gonna see that uh, it's disconnected. Um, I use I use uh, this a lot uh, through my uh, my years of uh, making uh, solid making uh, sketches uh, for SolidWorks. Uh, I've used it a lot actually. Um, okay, the other thing that I would like to show you is this little box here. Okay, I don't have uh, in context relation right now, but there's a lot a lot of people don't know about this one is uh, the defining context here. So let's say I have a very complex sketch in front of me and uh, the other guy, because usually you don't do this, it's always the other is doing this, but he's, he's working in context inside of SolidWorks. I would like to know exactly which entities or which, uh, which line is connected to what inside of uh, uh, another part inside my sketch. So if I go here and display delete relations, uh, I can click here and define in context and it's going to list me everything that I need to know regarding this sketch, this particular sketch what is connected to what inside of SOLIDWORKS and it's even going to tell me to which part it is connected, okay? So this is a, a neat trick uh, that people forget uh, that we do have inside of uh, SOLIDWORKS. Uh, another one that uh, I don't, um, a lot of people are ask me, uh, asking me for this and uh, you see here we do have a function that's called segment, okay? So I'm going to show you two, two tips and one here is uh, I'm going to create a line very quickly. I'm going to put a dimension here, something clean, okay, and uh, segment. Uh, actually, that's one of my first tricks is um, you can search any, any, any feature inside of this little box here, okay. So let's say I'm, um, uh, because right now you can see that I, I have it in my tools, but it's not there by default, okay? So if 
I search for segment. I can drag this tool and put it on my favorite tools here. Because if not, this tool is really hidden inside of uh, sketch tools and it's somewhere in there. Uh, uh, so just think about this. You can search here and you can drag uh, whatever uh, feature you would like inside of your uh, toolbar here. Okay. So what is the segment uh, feature is I want to split this line in five entities. Uh, as you can see here, uh, this line from now on is always going to be splitted uh, in five entity. And if I change this to, uh, let's say, 2200, as you can see here, uh, it did change dimension. So uh, before having this feature, it was obviously very, very hard to do. Uh, you would need your calculator on the side all the time uh, to create uh, this kind of uh, geometry. So let's move on regarding um regarding another tip that i have uh that i forgot to mention earlier is uh, inside of the s key okay 90 percent of the time what is the next feature that you will do when you go out of a sketch 90 percent of the time it's going to be an extruded cut or a boss extrude so think about adding those two features inside of your sketch environment okay when i say your sketch environment is uh for those who don't know the s key is um is different for every environment here so in a drawing i'm gonna have my drawing tools in an assembly i'm gonna have my assembly tool and in a part i'm gonna have my part tool okay but still when i go out of a sketch my next feature is always going to be either an extruded cut or a boss extrude or if i do sheet metal all day and i do base flange well put your base flange in there okay so this is uh, another tip that i'm giving you uh, for solidworks so obviously inside of a part there's not much there okay uh, the only thing i'm going to show you is this one having uh having the length here okay there's two reasons why i'm showing this is uh, i know back in the days in solidworks uh, there was a version that uh, you you should not really uh, uh, take those dimensions here but i want to show that it's actually related to that measure tool okay so if you use the measure tool instead of using this um, uh, this data okay it's the same Okay, so let's go inside here and measure and unit precision. I'm just going to show you that if I put this in angstrom, because I feel like it today, uh, I'm going to retake this dimension. You can see that it just changed to uh, angstrom. So uh, one of my trick here is if you're in Canada and uh, you are you always working with uh, dual unit uh, with uh, metric and uh, imperial, okay? Obviously, you can put both of them. So metric, imperial. I said imperial, okay. So we do have both dimensions here. And if in if you're in the U.S. and you're only working with imperial dimensions, obviously you could put inch in uh, fraction and put inch in decimal okay so you're gonna have both uh, both those values inside of the same click okay so as you can see here i do have fraction and i do have uh, joule dimensions so this is the trick i wanted to show you is uh, about the measure tool uh, it's it is linked to this part of uh, um, of the data that you have uh, down there Okay, inside of a part, obviously, when it comes to my S key, uh, my trick is uh, always to have those uh, fillet uh, planes and uh, the uh, old wizard, okay? All the rest, I usually don't use them, so I remove them. I just didn't customize this one uh, because I'm, it's been a while I've been uh, drafting, though. So I'm, uh, I'm always uh, removing everything except those three. Maybe just a very quick trick when it comes to uh, maybe planes. Just a reminder for a lot of people that don't know this trick is if you press control, you can copy planes. Okay. Uh, I know a lot of uh, you guys know about this, but uh, and the other trick here is um, there you go. You can just copy and slice, uh, make slice to uh, any part. Just control drag your. Uh, your um, your planes there. So 
but that's it for parts, okay? Um, there's not much uh, uh, you can do in the part environment. In, uh, it's always inside of a feature here, so uh, at the part level, there's not uh, much trick that you can learn. Assembly tricks. First one, obviously, uh, sorry, but control, you can, uh, you can copy parts, okay? Uh, it's not really a trick, everyone's supposed to know that, but still, just a reminder. Uh, the next trick is, uh, a lot of people know this already, but uh, I'm going to show you another trick afterwards, is uh, okay, the tab key, obviously, you can add parts. But the coolest trick is, when you press control, shift, and tab at the same time, so you push three of those buttons at the same time and you keep it down, okay, let's see what it does. Ah, I can see what's been hidden. So I still have those three keys uh, pushed down and I'm gonna just select one to, what I want to show back. So this is a cool little trick. Uh, before knowing this trick, I was always going uh, show it in components and reselecting everything uh, to, to show it back. So uh, I repeat this, okay, tab, 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 control, shift, tab, and I can take back my parts here. Uh, sorry, I just misclicked one, there you go. So, uh, nice little trick here. Okay, next one. Let's take uh, those three parts here. Sorry, I'm going to do a couple of uh, mates. Uh, let's do this. Okay, let's do this. Don't forget, if you lose this box, shift, it's going to bring it back. Okay. So, sorry for the wait, I'm just going to do some stuff, and this is, I actually like to do this even if it's long, because it's going to show you another trick that's uh, gone out in, uh, I think it was uh, 2016, it saved me a lot of time. The next trick is, um, like I said, I think this went out in 2016, if you select, uh, let's take those three parts, so number, 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 okay. If you press control and you have three selection uh, on the screen, what happens is you're gonna, you're gonna copy those three parts, but the cool trick is it comes with the mates now, okay? Uh, it's already uh, made it together, the same thing that I did on those. It was not the case uh, before, believe me. Uh, we, uh, I remember we were hacking some, uh, some uh, from new assembly, uh, copy the assembly and dissolving the assembly, so, uh, this is a cool trick now that uh, we can do inside of SOLIDWORKS. Speaking of mates, I'm just going to give you what is my best trick to understand mating. Okay. Um, okay. Usually people to, uh, uh, to see mates, they're going this way. Okay. They go into the little folder and they can see the mates. Or they go at the full uh, folder of constraints and they can see here all uh, uh, the mates. Or, once again, they right click, they view mates and it's going to list it here. The trick I'm going to give you is this one. If you click a part and you go here, property manager, you're going to see the constraints. But that's not even cool right now. What is very cool about what I'm going to show you is if I select those six pieces and I go here, actually I'm going to reselect it from the feature manager. So this one, this one, actually, okay, this one, this one, this one, and those ones. There you go. If I go here, you can see all of uh, the constraints here, okay? But further than that, did I put uh, this one? Okay, so if I select those two parts, okay, that's what I wanna show you. As you can see here in bold, in black, in very, very obvious, okay? Um, it's going to list me the, the, uh, the exact mate that I need to break if I want to break those two assemblies. So when you think about it, okay, you, um, it's always hard to figure out what type of mates the other guy did. Okay? So he's sending you his assembly and you see two sub-assemblies. 
Uh, if you want to know what are the mates that's connecting those two sub assemblies, you select from the feature tree one assembly, you select the other one, and when you go inside of your property manager, so let's take this again in example, you're going to see in black and bold what do you need to suppress or delete to disconnect those two sub assemblies. So this is, uh, I think it's a very cool trick. Um, before that, it was a mess for me to figure out what the other guy did, and uh, learning this trick helped me uh, helped me a lot understand uh, how the uh, how the mechanical mates or how the other guy did uh, his uh, mating uh, system inside of SolidWorks. Don't forget that since I think 2018, if you put a concentric here, you can lock it here. Okay, but let's say you don't lock it. Obviously, you're going to have a concentric here. Uh, don't forget this trick that you can right-click on the constraint uh, folder, the mate, the mate folder, and lock rotation for every uh, unlock rotation that is present inside of your mating, uh, mate folder. So from one click, you can lock the rotation of everything. Uh, I, I remind this because... Obviously, now when you do uh, when you do a concentric mate here, you do have this, but you do have this. You can lock it from there, okay? But what happens if you uh, open uh, an assembly that's been done in uh, 2016 where uh, everyone was not locking their rotation, okay? So just uh, remind this: uh, right click, lock rotation for everything. Okay, another trick here is um, this one. I actually like it a lot. Uh, let's take well, I'm still okay. Let's take this one. Let's take this one and let's copy another one. Okay. Let Let's say I would like to have this face co uh, coincident with this one. This face with this one and this face with this one. A lot of people are kind of scared of using this little guy here, okay, the, uh, the multi-mate uh, functionality. What is the multi-mate functionality is exactly what I described is I want to bring those guys coincident with this face. So I'm going to select this face as reference and boom, 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 okay. So in a single function, uh, I've been able to bring all those guys coincident to uh, this face. What I like about this is it's not a hack, okay? As you can see, it's three uh, individual uh, coincident uh, mate, okay? Uh, it's totally controllable, so it's not a hack. It's not a, a folder. It's not, uh, actually, you can create a folder, but it's not something that uh, if you uh, want to remove one, well, you have to delete everything to go back and redo everything. So it might, uh, so it's, it's really, really uh, a nice trick. So think about this. That's another uh, cool one uh, for you guys. Okay, next is um, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, okay, the famous uh, linear component pattern. For me, there's a big performance issue. Uh, a lot of people don't know this. I'm not going to talk a lot about performance. That's another uh, full subject uh, for another time. But uh, when you do have something under the the, the mate folder here, either um, a cut extrude, either a pattern, circular pattern, what any any functionality, even a plane, even if you have a plane under this mate folder, actually what happens is when you open uh, SolidWorks, when you open your assembly, you, you're forcing SolidWorks to go uh, through the uh, the feature manager from top to bottom a second time. It, it is time consuming. Any functionality that you have here, I'm, I'm not going to explain why, but uh, it is uh, for me a performance issue. And this is why I'm going to give you this little trick here. Uh, okay, let's do a linear pattern. Okay, what is the direction? Let's take this one. Uh, let's put uh, five of them at uh, maybe uh, 300. There you go. Okay. So my trick here is you can actually dissolve a pattern. 
as you can see, it brings up all those parts, okay? The only thing uh, that's left for me is mating them. They're still in the correct position. They, they're still in the correct position that, uh, that's relevant to the decision that I took uh, inside of my linear component, but um, they're gonna be floating afterwards. It's just a matter of mating them. So if you see that uh, you have um, a linear pattern, it's just a good thing to know that you can just uh, dissolve them. How much time? 31 minutes, perfect. Uh, okay, next trick. Uh, uh, this one is a cool one. Uh, there, there's two things uh, that I'm gonna show you. Uh, this has been, uh, I think this has been in, introduced in 2016. Uh, they, they stole this to uh, SolidWorks Composer. That was a, a functionality of SolidWorks Composer that I really liked. Let's say um, every day inside of this assembly, I'm always picking those two faces all the time, okay? Um, you can actually save this selection now. So where are you, my friend? Save, 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 save. Save selection, new selection set. So now I have a brand new folder here that if I open up this folder and I click here. The, it's going to select those two faces all uh, those two faces uh, all the time, okay? Let's give an exa a concrete example regarding this is um, I'm always changing my uh, my M5 bolt um, Every time I open up this assembly, save as, I need to change from M5 to M8, all those bolts, okay? Uh, well, select them one time, save the selection, and the next guy that's going to open up your assembly is going to be able to open uh, this, uh, this selection set folder and click all the M5 bolts at the same time. So that brings me to another trick, okay? A lot of people don't use this little down arrow. Uh, I really love this one, select identical components. What is it? Let's say I have uh, 150 of those brackets inside of sub and sub and sub assemblies all across my big complex assembly in front of me. Well, if I select just one and I go here and I say select identical components, boom. It's going to select all those brackets, whatever the level they are in, okay? So, like I said, if uh, you have multiple levels, sub-assemblies inside sub-assemblies, and you would like to pick and choose, uh, let's say, all the M5 um, uh, hardware that you have, uh, you could select only one bolt and just say select identical components, and it's going to drill through every sub-assembly and select those, okay? So oh, this is a cool, uh, cool trick. Obviously, uh, there's, uh, there's, there's more like uh, select suppress, select hidden, and uh, select toolbox. Uh, another trick that I have here is um, okay. I saw this a couple of times. Is uh, people forget to uh, hide their sketches. Okay. Um, and people are going like uh, on every part, opening, opening opening okay sorry this is in french so my the the text i'm gonna put here is is gonna be in french but i'm gonna translate it for you so let's say i would like to see all the sketches from all the parts okay uh, in this case in french okay but if you just type sketch here it's gonna give you all the sketch that exists inside of your uh, of your assembly and you're gonna easily see which one is uh, not hidden okay let's say this one okay I'm gonna well it's gonna show for everything uh, but I would like to see where is the uh, unhidden um, let's go back again yes. Okay, so as you can see here, I can see uh, all of uh, the unhidden uh, sketches. Okay, so th this is a cool trick. Actually, this one, this little search bar, uh, if, I, if I would have toolbox component in there, I would just type toolbox and it's gonna, it's gonna show me only the toolbox that are inside my, uh, my assembly. I use this a lot actually. Uh, let's say I would, because uh, you can actually search uh, inside of the custom properties with this, okay? 
so this example that I'm going to give you is, uh, let's say I do have a custom property a supplier for every of my parts and uh, half of my parts inside of this assembly is McMaster. I could just search McMaster here and it's going to select every McMaster part that I have inside of this assembly. So this is a very uh, powerful tool that you can use uh, inside of an assembly. Um, okay, I'm just going to show you another trick that I have regarding assembly. When you're the type of company that uh, import a lot of geometry from suppliers, okay, as you can see here, it's all dumb bodies. It's all uh, this is imported. Everything is imported actually in this uh, in this case. So uh, obviously, when you talk about uh, performances, uh, I don't need those those bolts. I don't need. Uh, I don't need this, okay? I don't need a lot of stuff actually from this. Uh, the only thing that I would like to have is uh, maybe uh, the, the outside of everything, okay? I, I don't need, and it's very heavy to, uh, to have all those imported geometry regarding uh, parts and nuts and bolts and everything. So the trick I'm going to give you is this. Uh, first off, there's something that I already did for this example is right-clicking here and removing uh, all of the appearances for all of the assembly because when it came from my supplier, uh, there were colors everywhere. Okay, so I remove all, all, all appearances. And my trick here is this. Let's put a color on this part. Let's apply it at the component level and let's pick maybe red so i would like to keep this to keep this i would like to keep this 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 uh, maybe okay maybe this won't be long for this example you will see that's a very very neat trick so this one this one and maybe mm, uh, yeah, I would like, whoops, sorry, this one. Okay, I don't need the tubes, I don't need the rest. This is what I choose to keep. Okay, so I select, and now I do have a selection set with color. This is the cool trick. If I press this, you see it selects what I just pick and choose inside of, uh, uh, of my assembly. And if I right-click... Uh, and I invert selection. What do you think it's going to happen? It's going to invert the selection. And now everything that I don't want inside of this assembly, my beautiful button delete. Okay. Yes to all my friend. So I just cleaned um, an imported geometry using colors. This is the cool trick that I, I, I've used this a lot uh, <coughs> through the years. Uh, uh, I've known about this trick uh, a long, long time, and people are starting to uh, to use it back. Uh, this is funny. I think it's very, very uh, a nifty way of cleaning up um, geometry from uh, imported bodies. Uh. Okay, so as you can see, I cleaned this, okay, and now it's uh, triangle-wise and performance-wise, obviously. Uh, it's a lot faster than it was uh, not even two minutes ago. First trick is please. Uh, there's a lot of people who I don't know why they don't know this, but you can use the view palette here. Uh, this is a very cool uh, way of just inserting views. It's fast, and uh, obviously, you can know uh, which one is uh, already inside of your drawing. So please use this. It's a lot faster than going through the menu of inserting model item, uh, not model items, but uh, model view and stuff so just keep this in mind okay uh a lot of people don't know this but technically a drawing inside of solidworks doesn't exist okay it's always a view of your 3d model behind and the way that i show this usually is this okay any 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 view inside of solidworks is technically a 3d view so you can move around any view inside of SOLIDWORKS to uh, show something else. I'm going to give you an example here is, uh, let's say I have an exploded view that when I put it in the uh, isometric view, I would like to just tilt it a bit just to see one part that's in the chain, which has a, a balloon there. And I would like just to move it just a little bit. 
Uh, I always use this. People don't know this trick. They're, they, they're going back to the 3D. They create a new view uh, and they save the view and they go here and they use it. For me, it's, uh, it's losing uh, a lot of time. So you can just uh, move your, uh, your view here in 3D. Um, okay, another trick that I really like is... Uh, um, it's all imported body. I'm not sure it's going to work, but... Uh, a bit of material, not indented, okay. Well, it's all empty, but uh, for this case, it's gonna, I think it's gonna work. Let's say I put a balloon here and a balloon here. Well, it's all the same part. It's this, it's all part number one. Okay, uh, actually, just a reminder is if you click here, okay, uh, you're gonna see all your parts, but you're, you're going to have this symbol on uh, if a part has a balloon and if a part doesn't have a balloon. So for all you guys uh, who were like me before knowing this trick is I was taking my little red pen here and I was going to, to the drawing and okay, balloon one is there, balloon two is there, balloon three, where are you, where are you, where are you? Uh, so right now uh, this trick is, uh, is this... Um, for any bill of material that you do have balloon on your parts, if you see the symbol, that means that this assembly has been uh, ballooned. Actually, I would need to find this part to give you a better example, but I think you understand the concept here. Uh, cool trick here, which I really like. Uh, let's copy. For those of you guys that have really complex view and there's always uh, views over the other one, I mean this little uh, this little box here, the orange one right now, um, it's hard sometimes to have this little symbol. Okay, it's um, you, you need to move your mouse and sometimes it's hard to pick. Okay, just remember that it, if you press the Alt uh, button on your keyboard, you can take the view from anywhere. Okay, uh, this is a cool trick because uh, I did have a lot of views that were kind of overlapping with notes and this and that, and it was really hard sometimes to go and pick that little, uh, uh, have that little um, cross there, so so you'll be able to move your uh, your view. So the Alt key on your keyboard, you just take from anywhere, and it's gonna move. Uh, it's gonna move your view. Uh, another cool thing here time oh, we're out of time I'm sorry I do have so many tricks uh, actually uh, when I do uh, optimization service uh, we're spending three hours with uh, tips and tricks like this so if someone can tell me uh, how many tricks that I show you in 45 minutes that would be appreciated just send an email at uh, support at solid or uh, or uh, on the review of those um, of the presentation of SolidWorks 2021 that would be appreciated and I hope you enjoy this session.